We're now given really good, ample opportunities right when someone catches our page on the screen to captivate and convert. So it is up to you to be very mindful with how you want to create that content with the pin posts, what you're saying, really thinking about that customer journey, and making sure that you have your elevator pitch clear and concise and ready to rock and roll. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Influencer Podcast. I am excited to be here with you today as we dive into something that I know we all love to hate, hate to love, want to figure out, and that is growth on Instagram. How to grow on Instagram and hopefully how to do it quickly and easily. Now, obviously, the name of the influencer and Instagram game has changed a lot over the years. We've all had to pivot test, tweak, do all the things. But there's one thing that has stayed a constant with a lot of what I teach in my pitch methods and in my branding methods. And that's what I want to dive in with you today. It's really about this one thing that you can do to start showing up, making money, really attracting your ideal follower, engaging with them more, and starting to attract the brands and the companies that you want to work with. And so that is what we're gonna be covering today. So what is that thing? Well, I want you to imagine for a moment that you work for a well-known lifestyle brand and you're looking for an amazing content creator, entrepreneur, coach, to help spread the word about your company, about your products and services. And you plan to pay this person for a collaboration, for a partnership. And if things go well, you want to continue that relationship. So as you scroll through Instagram looking for that special someone, what ends up happening is that minutes turn into hours, hours turn into days, and you still haven't found that right person to promote your products, your, your services, your brand, your business. Why? Well, because most content creators forget to do this one thing. There is this one thing, and that is what I'm about to share with you. But before we get to that, I first wanna start talking about this idea of content creator. What is a content creator? You may be listening to this and maybe you're starting to tune out because you don't think of yourself as a content creator, or maybe you don't like to label yourself as a content creator. I wanna go ahead and get really clear on what I think a content creator is and how I use the term and how I know most brands when they're working with people on social media use the term. So a content creator is someone who creates entertaining, inspiring, or educational material. Content creation usually pertains to digital content since that's where the majority of content is consumed social media, online, digital content, and that is where the money is. So if you're looking to earn revenue through the content that you create and you are doing it on a social media platform, you essentially are a content creator, at least in the eyes of the companies that wanna pay you. So examples are bloggers, podcasters, YouTubers, online course creators, social media influencers, even coaches who use social media as a way to grow their brand and sell their services, they all fall into the content creator bucket. It doesn't mean that that's all you do, but that in and of itself, if you are any of those things, you are a content creator. Now, when it comes to personal branding, and how we're using the content to build our brand, personal branding is the practice of creating a brand around a person, AKA you, rather than a business entity. So personal branding is used to help further the careers of content creators by positioning them as an expert within their niche or their industry. So I wanted to get clear on that first because I think that you have to know that distinction before I dive into what I'm about to share. Content creators grow their credibility, their influence, their reach, their business, and their brand by creating a personal brand. That's how we do that. So let's clear it up. Who are you? You're a content creator. What do you do? You create content. And how do you grow? By building your personal brand. And so with that said, your goal should always be one of these two things, to create 
branded content, which means content that you are paid to create while growing your personal brand. Those are the two things. You wanna create content that you are getting paid to create that means either another business, another brand, a client, a customer is paying you while growing your personal brand. Now that we have that distinction wrapped up, I want to dive into that one thing that I see a lot of times content creators not doing, at least in the way in which we could be doing more successfully to help us get in front of the people that we want to get in front of. So we're going to go back to my fantasy that I was having. Imagine that you work for a well-known lifestyle brand and they are looking for an amazing content creator to help spread the word about their company and you are this person, you plan to pay this person for collaboration. And if things go well, you wanna continue that relationship. And so as you start scrolling through Instagram, looking for this person, it can get very frustrating because you haven't found the right person to promote your products. The same thing can happen for followers people that you're wanting to engage with your content. They start to scroll around looking for ideally someone like you, and there's nothing that is captivating them and getting them to stay. Why? Well, because you typically as a content creator, and I see this happen all of the time, you overlook a very important place to pitch and promote yourself on social media, and that is your bio. So when it comes to Instagram bios, the ones that I typically see, they sound like just a random list of things, right? Like it will say makeup, lifestyle, mom, beauty, food, health, like to know it, DM me to order, Jesus, Cincinnati. <laughs> what does any of that mean? And is any of it inspiring? I don't think so. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh yeah, I see that kind of bio on Instagram 15 million times a day. Or maybe you're thinking, oh no, that's exactly what mine looks like. Well, feel no shame. Millions of people make the same mistake. So you're not alone in this feeling and feeling this way. And in fact, I think that it's more common than not because we don't really take time to see the value in the bio. What I really feel is so important about this is that Instagram gives us roughly 160 words to connect to our ideal client, our ideal audience, our ideal customer, and really the ideal brands and businesses that we want to partner with and collaborate with. And a lot of times what happens is that we don't really see the front page of our Instagram, especially when it's above the fold like that, where the bio is and where our photo is, as the front door of our brand and business. And so instead of really using that, that precious character space to share more about who we are as a brand, a lot of us just end up telling the world very random fa facts about ourselves that wouldn't inspire anyone to want to follow us, buy from us, or work from us. And here's the thing, people follow people that they relate to and people work with people that they relate to, especially ones who can tell a story <laughs> in a short sentence. Followers and the brands and the companies that you either want to follow you or to partner with you, they want to know how you can help them. Not that you like chocolate or love being a mom, unless of course that is part of your business. They want to know what you do and why you're the best person to follow or collaborate with. And this is where my method of creating a super effective elevator pitch comes in. Now, I have been teaching this for years and it never gets old. This is a very simple, easy, evergreen method that you can start putting into practice today. One that you can use not just for your bio, but also in networking, in social settings, when someone asks you, hey, what do you do for a living? My elevator pitch method will give your audience a concise description of your business as well as what they can expect when they work with you. And writing it is pretty simple. You follow these four points. Are you ready? The first one is, who you are, the second one is what you offer, the third is how you serve, and the fourth is why it's important. Who you are, what you offer, how you serve, why it's important. And you wanna make sure that you do this, that you answer these questions in a very captivating way. If you want an example of how to do this, head over to my Instagram, look at my bio, you will see how clean and concise it is. I tell you exactly who I am, I tell you exactly what I offer, I tell you exactly how I serve, and I tell you why that's important. And I want you to keep in mind that your elevator pitch will change as you grow. So don't be afraid to update it often. Depending on what I may be working on at the time, I update mine pretty frequently. So I want you to keep that in mind as you're thinking about this. But again, it's these four points, 
who you are, what you do, how you serve, and why is it important. You want to make sure that people are intrigued by following you. They know exactly why they should follow you. What is the benefit of coming on board to your page, to being a part of your community? And it's your job to make sure that you get that across. I want to say, especially those who may be starting out right now, or if you're in this place of a pivot or a transition, using your bio as the front door of your brand and business to captivate will make your growth so much easier. It will allow you to be more clear and concise with the content that you create. It will allow you to attract the type of ideal followers that you want to have in your community. It will allow you to get more traction and more volume happening in your direct messages if that's important to you. And it allows you to make a clear distinction of what makes you different than everybody else out there on the playing field. Now, I want to give you another hack today. This is kind of another pro tip on top of the elevator pitch. Recently, Instagram has given accounts the ability to pin posts at the top of their page at their Instagram page. So you can have three posts that you can pin at the top. Now, I love this feature for so many reasons, but one that I specifically want to chat with you all today about is that you can dive deeper into your elevator pitch in these pin posts. So this is what I mean. Let's say, for example, that you are a content creator and you specialize in education, you specialize in maybe mommy or parenting products. And then let's say that you also, you know, love to work with brands on consulting with things for long-term partnerships. I'm literally just making this up as I go. So here are three distinct things that you could essentially offer not only to the people that you want to work with, but to your followers. And now with the pin post option, we get three opportunities to be able to highlight that in a more deeper and connective way. So how you could do that is that you could have one pin post that dives deeper into some of the things that you offer. And maybe this is going to be focused on your followers. When you think about your follower journey, right? They're coming to your page for the first time. They're captivated by your new elevator pitch in your bio. They're curious, they want to learn more. What is that pin post going to say to get them interested to clicking on it and reading more about what it is that you want them to know. This is all about you thinking about that follower journey from the moment that they come to your page to the last thing that you want them to do, whether that is engaging with you, investing in you in some way, chatting with you about something in your DMs. Are you making sure to really pave that path for them so they know what to do. And if not, now's your chance to do that in a good way and a good place to do that is on these pin posts. So you could have one that is really direct to your followers that shares a little bit more about who you are, what you offer, how you serve, why it's important, why you're excited that they're here, what they can expect from you, and maybe a clear call to action after that. Then you could have another pin post that is specific to the types of brands or companies that you want to partner or collaborate with. If there are certain types of content that you create that typically do really well, you could talk about that there. If there's some sort of sponsorship or collaboration that you have done consistently that works really well, you could talk about that there. This is really about the brand journey. If you are someone who wants to partner with brands, what do they need to know about you to dive in deeper, to make them more invested and interested? And this is again, where you can take those four points of your elevator pitch and then dive in deeper. Or maybe you're someone who also has your own products and services, which means you have your own customer base and you want to create a customer journey on your Instagram feed from the time that they land on your page to some kind of call to action. So don't overlook the power of your Instagram bio and of these pin post options. We're now given really good ample opportunities right when someone catches our page on the screen to captivate and convert. So it is up to you to be very mindful with how you want to create that content with the pin posts, what you're saying, really thinking about that customer journey and making sure that you have your elevator pitch clear and concise and ready to rock and roll. So I hope that this is helpful. 
This again, were some really easy tips that you can start to use today to grow on Instagram. And I would love to know what your thoughts and feedback are of today's episode. And if you want to pitch brand deals and start getting paid for it, then I can help you with that. All you gotta do is DM me the word pitch on Instagram at Joel Solomon to get my step-by-step pitch guide and free pitch template. Happy to send it your way. Just DM me the word pitch and I will get it over to you. And let me know once you start to really utilize the tips and strategies that I shared today from my larger method, how that works for you. This is something that the foundation of how I teach elevator pitch has been something that I've been teaching for years. It works, it never fails. And now we just have more integrated and innovative ways to really use it the more that Instagram rolls out more features. So I hope this was helpful. Make sure to DM me the word pitch if you want extra help. And I will see you next week, my friends. Thank you.